Hello, hi there, my name is Paul and I'm one of the teachers at SET English. I'm going to do a little session today on modal verbs and full infinitives, mistakes that people commonly make. Okay, so I'll walk you through a little bit to do with modal verbs, then I'll show you the mistake and then I'll explain why it happens. Okay, so here we go. Modal verbs are verbs which support the main verbs in sentences. So an example of a modal verb would be can, must, should, might. They're all common modal verbs that we use. They have lots of different functions in English. Um, I'm not going to go through all of those functions now, but things like permission, ability, advice, obligation, prohibition, things like that. The kind of thing that you can learn about quite easily. Now, we also have these half modal verbs and a couple of those would be be able to and have to. They're called half modal verbs. They don't behave the same way that modal verbs do. Okay, and that's something that we're going to touch on today. So, let's look at an example. Mr. Smith can mobilize independently. You can see that modal verb. The modal verb is there, it's can. And what's it followed by? It's followed by the infinitive without to. Okay, so it's can mobilize. Let's have another example. Mrs. Gardner might require an MRI. Okay, might is our modal verb. Require is our infinitive without to. We don't have to there. And I think you can feel, probably predict what the error is that I'm going to tell you. Okay, so here it comes. See if you can spot the error. Mr. Smith can to mobilize independently. Okay, so we've got to mobilize here, which is the full infinitive. And we don't want the full infinitive. Okay, we want the infinitive without to. We want can mobilize. So why? Well, the reason why is because those half modal verbs that I showed you earlier, they require to. Have a look at them again. Miss Smith is able to attend physio on Wednesdays. All right, so half modal verbs. Let's have a look at them. We've got be able to, we've got have to. Be able to deals with ability um, and have to deals with obligation. So notice at the end of both of those, um, at the both of those modal verbs, we've got to. Okay, so Mr. Smith is able to climb the stairs unaided. Mr. and Mrs. Gardner are able to attend the upcoming meeting. So we can see Mr. Smith is able to, Mr. and Mrs. Gardner are able to. We've got there the subject verb agreement. So the verb to be for these half modal verbs changes. And notice that they end with to. And it's the same with have to. Mrs. Smith has to take her medication daily. We have to organize a follow up meeting. So again, we've got has, Mrs. Smith has. That's got the, the subject verb agreement. We have to, subject verb agreement. Notice that they've got to, again, to, has to take, have to organize. So we use the full infinitive with these ones. Okay, so this common error, Mr. Smith can to mobilize independently, is something we should avoid. We shouldn't be putting to with can, with might, with should. Okay, they shouldn't have to. So it should be like this, Mr. Smith can mobilize. So what we need to remember is modal verbs have an infinitive without to, okay? It's those half modal verbs, be able to and have to, that confuse things. So if you're using might or must or can or should, avoid to, don't make that mistake. Okay, if you want to come and find more lessons like this, come to our website, have a little look and uh, we'll see you there. Bye-bye.